You have this big pile of cash that corrupts grown people. Let's give it to the kids. I mean, I don't know that this is, makes sense to me. There's not even a salary to debate. They're not employees. They're students. But now you got a kid who's more concerned about their contract than their final exams. They're students, and they're they're not employees. They want to participate in, in their sport as part of that educational experience. If you're talking about college students, it seems to me that the point of them being there is for them to get in those books and learn. The average worth of a collegiate football player is about $120,000. It's about $265,000 for the average men's basketball player. If, if that's what people want out of college athletics, then of course it's not collegiate athletics anymore, it's professional athletics. NC Twig, they're the biggest pimps around. <laughs> they are pimp winning athletes. Aren't you concerned? that if we create this superstar class of these uh, like multimillionaire students wandering around, I mean, what does that do to all the rest of the kids who just want to play for the love of the game? If you're going to hire someone to play football for you, why would you want them to be a student? What are you trying to fix here by saying that these st students should be paid? I'm trying to get it to the point where the, uh, what they call the student athlete, which is really a myth, I, we, we got to end that. We have to come to reality. Athletes are still exploited if they blow out their knee. If they somehow don't meet the mandates of a coach, they lose their scholarship. As the NCAA tournament rolls on, the athletes are not shying away. They're not backing down. They are, in fact, making their voices heard. Sedona Prince led the charge for equal facilities akin to the men's. The NCAA budged after much backlash though the final workout rooms are still way short. The figures each March are staggering. The athletes of let's just say the tournament alone, bring in almost $1 billion just off television deals. Where's this money even gonna come from to, to, to pay these superstar athletes? We, you're talking about you know, the NCAA, that's a, a not-for-profit, isn't it? The athletes, through their followings on social media, launched the hashtag NotNCAA Property Campaign. They are calling for the NCAA to allow all athletes the freedom to have representation and receive pay for use of name, image, and likeness by July 1. A meeting with NCAA Pres Mark Emmert, meetings with state and federal lawmakers and President Biden's administration to pass laws to give college athletes physical, academic, and financial protections. The Supreme Court to rule in support of plaintiffs slash college athletes in Austin versus NCAA, which is examining whether players should be compensated, and to not give the NCAA any power to deny equal freedoms. But, of course, NCAA President Mark Emmert denied a request to meet right now. The reason being, schedule's full, sorry. So, instead, they'll hold a meeting after the NCAA tournament. Emmert is a multi-millionaire off the backs of kids. He recently made close to $3 million. In April, sports media will also go on NCAA hiatus. We'll cover MLB opening day, the Masters, the playoffs for the NBA and NHL. That, my friends, is the ideal time for this meeting to happen. Ohio State's Seth Towns put it like this. The NCAA has used the word amateurism to remain one of the most exploitative industries in the country. There are simple facts at play. The NCAA amasses over $1 billion a year and essentially creates an entire economy for individuals and corporations to profit from. The players, who are literally and absolutely responsible for generating this fortune, are completely omitted from profiting access and including using their own name, the NCAA restricting players from using our names, images, and likenesses rejects civil liberty. We are individuals who deserve to profit from the names we have worked our whole lives to accentuate. Rutgers guard Geo Baker, one of the many outspoken athletes, tweeted last January, you realize we are playing in a pandemic, being told to stay away from everyone we love just for y'all entertainment, but I can't sell my own jersey with my last name on it to help my future financially? That makes sense to you? Intercollegiate Collegiate athletics exists in the fantasy wing of the academy where athletes are governed. They are commodities who facilitate a semi-pro on-campus entertainment industry, wrote the great William C. Roden, who penned a must-read titled $40 Million Slaves. The threatened action shows the extent to which college athletes have begun to see through the conditions that make intercollegiate athletics sports' greatest plantation. Young, mostly black players, providing the muscle while mostly white men reap the benefits.